WWDC 2022 is on Monday, and there have been a ton of changes since our last video when the invite dropped. Some products are not happening anymore, while some new products are. So, last minute leaks, let's get into it. Starting off with iOS 16, in the last video I was saying how we didn't really know much about it, but that has actually changed quite dramatically. And there are seven big rumored changes here. The first one is the always on display support for the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro, with potentially some really unique lock screen designs. Two, a completely redesigned lock screen with support for widgets, and possibly even the ability to have custom controls as opposed to just a default camera and flashlight. 3. Some significant improvements to notifications. 4. An updated health app with improved sleep tracking capabilities, medicine reminders, and new women's health features. 5. Car crash detection. 6. A new app for classical music with visual, audio, and haptic feedback. And 7. Fresh Apple apps, which could either mean an updated design for the current apps or some more new Apple-made apps entirely. And I'm pretty sure that there are gonna be far more changes than just these, so do make sure to subscribe to our brand new Zero of Tech Shorts channel as we'll have plenty of iOS 16 tips and tricks on there. Also, iOS 16 is set to drop support for the iPhone 6s and the first gen SC. When it comes to iPad OS 16, the biggest change is set to be a new multitasking interface. Now, I do think that Apple did make a really good job with iPad OS 15 and how they made multitasking much more intuitive with drag and drop gestures and those indicator icons. So I think that the only way for us to get a new multitasking interface is for Apple to give us detachable windows or at least the ability to have some slide over apps and mimic the way macOS handles multiple windows on the screen, at least. Uh, this is what I'm hoping for. Aside from this, we expect all the other iOS 16 changes to be present too. Next up, we have macOS 13. And according to Mark Gurman, Apple will be updating system preferences to bring them more in line with how settings looks on iOS. I don't know how I feel about that. I do believe that an icon-based system like it is on the Mac is far easier to navigate than the list-based one that the iPhone uses. Uses. Mark also says that we would be able to see individual app settings there too, which we already have, but only for the apps that choose to do so. So I don't know if this would mean that we would now see the settings for all of our installed apps. If so, system preferences would simply become a mess. One thing that I do want updated is the name. Just call it Settings Apple. Aside from this change, Mark states that we'll see some redesigned macOS apps, which would likely be all the default ones, such as Mail, Safari, Reminders, Notes, and so on. I'm really curious to see what this new redesign is, probably just some small design tweaks. Then we have Watch OS 9, which is actually expected to be a significant upgrade, with the biggest change being in terms of activity tracking. In our Apple Watch Series 8 video, I was envisioning the idea of Apple potentially giving us a fourth ring that would track your overall health. I would personally love to see this. What do you guys think? Aside from this, we also expect to see additional metrics for running workouts, maybe something related to the oxygen level as that is actually not being shown during a workout at the moment. More workout types are also expected, alongside improvements to health tracking and the ability to show how long a person has been in the state of atrial fibrillation for. The current watch faces are expected to get refreshed, likely for that rumored larger size of the Series 8. A car crash detection is coming too, and we're also expecting to see a low power mode that allows you to use your watch as you normally would, but simply have your battery last longer, likely due to limiting background app refreshes and the clock speed. So now let's talk about hardware. Mark Herman states that if we do get any new hardware, it would be a brand new MacBook Air. We've been hearing about this new MacBook Air for quite some time now, so I think you all know what it's all about. New design, multiple colors, white bezels, white keyboard, and the new chip, the M2. And Maguire Wood seems to be pretty certain that we will be getting the new Air at WWDC. Also, I found this kind of weird easter egg on Apple's website, so if you go to the WWDC page um, and then you tap on it, it would bring up the AR view. Normally you would have a specific AR toggle for that. That AR view would give you a trading card pack and once you open that, you'll get three cards of different colors. And these colors do change, and in total there are eight cards. Red, orange, yellow, green, white, blue, purple, and pink. You know what else comes in eight colors? Uh, nothing. 
But the iMac does come in 7, so it is only missing the pink. The new MacBook Air was actually rumored to come in the same colors as the new iMac. That was how we rendered our concept too, so it could be that these cards are actually a hint from Apple at the new MacBook Air announcement. Or they could be a hint um, towards the new M2 chip. They, they kind of gave us a similar hint with those rainbow Apple logo colors uh, when they introduced the M1 Ultra. Also, speaking of uh, the M2 chip, it might not be what we were all expecting. The M2, from what we know so far, would be based on a new 3 nanometer manufacturing process, down from 5, and it would come with higher clocked CPU cores and two extra GPU cores. But according to leaker Shrimp Apple Pro, there is one more M1 chip coming that would feature updated high performance and efficiency cores. This could of course be the upcoming Mac Pro chip, the M1 Extreme, but that is supposed to be a dual M1 Ultra chip, so we're not expecting to see any changes in terms of the cores here. Chance Miller from 95 Mac said that Ming Chico told him that this chip could be a modified version of the M1 with the true M2 potentially being pushed to 2023, which means that we could actually see the new MacBook Air come with this modified M1 chip. I don't know, M1 Plus maybe? Instead of the more game-changing M2. But then at the same time, Apple claims that the M1 Ultra was the last M1 chip model. We're adding one last chip to the M1 family. And it's gonna blow your mind. Minchiko even claimed that his new MacBook Air could come with the modified M1 chip and then the true M2 could be kept for the MacBook Pros. But then the MacBook Pros are expected to come with the M2 Pro and M2 Max, so what is going on? Okay, here's what I think. The M2, as we know it, is a slightly more powerful M1, but it still cannot compete with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max when it comes to the graphical performance. So the M2 would make a lot of sense for something like an updated base MacBook Pro, an updated 24-inch iMac, a new Mac Mini, and of course the new MacBook Air. And those two extra GPU cores that we've heard about is what Shrimp Apple Pro was referring to uh, when he said updated high performance and efficiency cores, at least that's what I think. So what I'm saying is that I still believe that a new MacBook Air would come come with the M2 chip is just that it will not be manufactured on a 3 nanometer process, so still a 5, and then the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips would indeed be manufactured on a 3 nanometer process, and those would offer an even bigger performance jump uh, with a more modern chip architecture too. This is what I believe would make the most amount of sense. But what do you guys think? And of course that if we do see this new MacBook Air unveiled at WWDC, it would also make sense for Apple to release an updated iMac with the same M2 chip and an updated Mac Mini with all of those color options and the new design that we've heard about. There's still a lot of uncertainty surrounding the Bates MacBook Pro model, more specifically if it would keep the same design as the 13-inch or get updated to the 14-inch MacBook Pro's design. But regardless of what design it has, if we do see a new MacBook Air, I also expect us to get a new Bates Pro at WWDC. But don't worry, as we will be covering all of these on the channel, so make sure you have the notification bell enabled. Now, aside from the software releases and potentially the new Air and the other upcoming Macs, Apple might tease their VR headset. And that's because Apple has filed for the Reality OS trademark, which has long been rumored to be the name for the operating system that their VR slash AR headset would be running on. On top of this, Apple's executive board is said to have received a demo of the headset, which means that the functionality aspect of it is complete. Mark Gurman and Ming-Chi Kuo have both stated that Apple won't be unveiling the headset at WWC, as the release is still expected to be in 2023, and unveiling it too early would give their competitors too much of a glimpse into Apple's future plans. But I still believe that we might see a tease of Reality OS, and this is to get developers ready for when the headset would eventually launch next year. In fact, Apple is expected to have three major events to introduce the public and the developers to their augmented reality future. The first event is when they'll unveil Reality OS, and this could very likely be at this WWDC in order to get developers to start making apps. The second event would be when Apple unveils and teases the actual headset. This isn't expected to be until early 2023, followed by the third event, which would be the release. So this is when we'll see the headset running, some of the third-party apps that the developers have made, and also some, you know, pricing options. I'm personally super hyped for this year's WWDC. Like, even if we don't get any Reality OS reveal or even a new MacBook Air, I still think that the improvements to iOS 16, iPadOS, and WatchOS will still be very exciting. So, yeah, stay tuned for a ton of coverage on the channel starting next week. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.